Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jonathan. Happy Sunday. You're back in Philadelphia with the nice pool. I like this background. I, you didn't like the other background. It's very lovely. Yes, I want to come <laughs> it visit. Sounds right. That Chautauqua background. Of Can I work from home there and then just like lounge and work out by the pool? Like, is this possible? Yes. Okay. But of course, Dave. Come I'm on. There. Like, how long are you there for? I'm there tomorrow. All right. Like, okay. actually, I'm, I'm doing the full I week. Wait, no, no. If I finish recording now, I can get there before TSL Live tonight. So I can't. Yes. All right. <laughs> <Book. laughs> in the pool, Dave Lee's. Okay. Yes. Yes. We'll work out on the sides. It'll be like one of those YouTube. It's one of my dreams, actually, is to have like one of those channels. You know, like there's, I follow a couple that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks delightful. So Except the working out part. <laughs> and the ice baths. Oh, did yeah. I tell you? So uh, update. Okay. I bought an ice bath and it's like two feet from my computer right now. Okay. But it's you know child that it's it's the best thing you ever will do in your life. Okay. Do it on TSL Live. <laughs> no, I could do it because I have like it's like better than meditation. It got rid of all of the tension in my low back. Now I have been doing a ton of Pilates for it, but it was the scariest thing on Monday or Tuesday. It was Tuesday, Tuesday night. It started to, like I stretch every night. And after I stretched, I was laying down and my back muscles started to like release. Like, and then like my abs would engage and I was like squirming back and forth, like getting that spinal fluid going and like more would release. And then more and more and more and more and more. And like, it was crazy. And the whole system of the body keeps the score. Oh, emotions coming out. Like- I'm going to ask you when, when that happens to me, it is also a surge of locked emotion really. I realized that like, I've never really accessed anger before in that way, you like processed it. Like, and then um, like F U energy motivation, like, yes. It's not like we are good, okay? Not, this is the tree is flowing, yeah. Yeah, so, but like you can't do it too close to bed because it'll keep you up. Yeah, like, it certainly people. could depending on what it releases, yeah. So anyone who knows me knows like, I'm a coffee uh, enthusiast. I'm not sure, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, okay. I like barely have any now. Mm. You like don't need it. The body's sort of regulating itself. Yeah. That, yeah. I can't do that. So anyway, cause I try to stay in cause I think the shower, I would stay in for like three minutes. I'm like, okay, I'm not having it over my head. So what if I stay in for like one song which became two songs to three because you want to get like, it also like it's the, brain chemicals but it also like stimulates the brown fat in your body which burns the white fat so it's like good for your no it's it's like really positive uh for your body so you want to build brown fat so you um you do it and i was listening to hubble's music from the olympics which let me tell you when you're meditating in an ice bath was like incredible like maybe we were a little wrong about it like maybe maybe she was a visionary and we didn't appreciate it at the time then i listened to like the lesbian songs that papadakis and hubble skate to which is such a moment to have in an ice bath <laughs> and then it came to me what i'm skating to for this year and it came and I was like, if I wanted to skate to one piece of music and not care what anyone thought, what would I do? And I was like, and then I thought, Galena would have a stroke if I did this. And I was like, and that's why I should do it. <laughs> and so, now it is, are you announcing it? Not yet. Okay. But it's like, I picked two, because I'm doing a solo free dance too. So I picked two songs that are like, the most like meaningful to me. And then I thought about like, who would be a good person for this music choice. And I remembered that Karen Kwan once choreographed a program to someone for the Kesha song, Pray In, which was like a real uh, message. And um, so she's coming in the beginning of September and we're gonna document it. So, so she's from California, right? 
Yeah, she's coming out to New York. Okay. And we're gonna do that. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. And she's like, I'm gonna be a pusher. We may not be friends after this. I mean, that's fine. That's like. Fine. Try me, yeah. <laughs> By the way, everyone, this is this and that. If you are new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. Yes, <laughs> Jonathan, how was your week? What's going on? It's nice to be back. I got my hair cut finally after seven weeks. It was oh, you know what was my highlight on my train ride to Philadelphia this morning? What? Listen to the Paul Wiley interview. Thank you. I I loved it. I loved it. I loved him. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I thought the the conversation was really interesting. So handsome, so handsome, more than I remember. Um, but I just loved like- Is it Anderson Cooper quality with like the, the yeah, silver? Yeah. Silver Fox situation, but clean cut, nice guy, well-spoken, great vocabulary. Um, it was just interesting to hear his take on a lot of this stuff because you are right. You were asking him a lot about um, things that we have not really heard from him on. So it, it was kind of cool to hear all of that, I thought. Um, oh, I wasn't exaggerating about Dorothy, by the way. I, I believe that you were not exaggerating about Dorothy at all. Yeah. And she called me. Well, first she texted me because like we text back and forth since. And she's like, I've sent her spins and she gives me little tips. And same thing with like Mary Scaffold. And I, it's really like helped me. And like the first spin that I really like felt like I had in a good place that I was proud of was like the scratch to back scratch. And then I was like, okay, now I want to do sit like the Dorothy way that Dick Button raves about in his book. Right. I've like been watching the Lucy videos and then started doing it. So I've like, so I sent her that spin and she was like, can I call you about your sit spin? And I was like, yeah. Like, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> when, <laughs> right? So yeah. and she's like, we're talking about what an entrance we could do in it. And Dorothy's like on her porch. And, you know, we're talking about like an Ina Bauer and to the end, you know, and she's like, yeah, and I'm trying to do it right here. It was like, like surreal, right? And then, and then I'm like, what do you, you know, so what do you like about Paul Wiley skating? Cause she, she knew, cause I told her, right? she just went into like the most minute detail about the length of his crossovers and how even, but the other thing that really got me with Dorothy is she go, she was saying, you know, it, he really captured old school skating before it changed for the worse. And like, I think for different people that means different things. And it would be interesting when Dorothy thought that it turned, right? And became this thing that we don't like as much because she said he had old school style and skating quality with 90s content. And I was like, so she's going back. She thought anything after figures, maybe. Yeah. Even before, right? Like who knows which she's like me. Is this post Robin Cousins? Is this post like well, it's even funny as I look back on skating eras, I would I consider 76 the end of an era. Mm. Almost. Um the end of Robin Cousins is an era. Or also maybe maybe the end of 1980, but like the women's programs were very different in 1980. That's when Sam it's was a groundbreaker. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Icon. All that right. Was, that's the Mary girl. Who was the other one we had? Lisa Marie Allen. Lisa, love her. You know, as Lisa, as uh, Linda told us, she's tall. Uh, that was. <laughs> Linda is not. <laughs> oh my goodness. How is Linda doing? Yes. So, other thing, one thing that we didn't talk about last week, which I had seen but I was on vacation and I didn't go through all the translations. Like I thought I saw what I saw and like, I thought about it and I felt bad, but I talked to someone who really put this into perspective about what a hard time Diana Davis has had in life. If you think about it just from her perspective is that her father passed away, Sergei Boyanov the husband of Elena Boyanova. Remember there was all that stuff about how he gifted a Terry the apartment and all of that stuff. So I think it's so interesting to think about this because her entire life has been, as someone pointed out to me, and this is someone with ties to Russia, they said, think about it, her entire life has been a lie. 
Or that she couldn't live out loud about who he was. Her mother yeah. got, her mother lied about who the father was, that whole Davis story and, you know, and she wrote like Papa with the broken hearts. And you think about it and you think like, yeah, like a Terry, like caused this like lie in her life. That's almost like a stain on her that she has nothing to do with. That's right. not her fault at all. And, but you think about, people think about the Sochi Olympics and a lot of people listen, will say that Kim Yuna deserved to win, but like think about it from the Russian point of view. Lipnitskaya was supposed to win, right? But a Terry was going against Buyanova when she has a child with her husband. And Buyanova won that. That's like really powerful. That's like- and Never again. Buyanova. What? Buyanova basically ended her- Who her cares? That yeah. Lipnitskaya was in the process of becoming like a Nadia Komanich icon, right? Like when that first competition happened, the first week of the Olympics and she's with Putin and has the hat on. And then when she falls apart, but like, is that a Terry's karma? Right. Think about it. Whoever a Terry has wanted to win the Olympics never happens. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, nothing else. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> right? Like, that's, yeah, that's right? Like, and in other news, you know, she's having a new skating school this week. In other news, Yulia and Evgenia were not there. I'm just, just saying I didn't see them at the opening. They weren't there. I'm sure they had, you know, other But then we there. got that article where Anna Shcherbakova is still undecided. I saw her do a triple flip in a video in China. Oh, how about Kostranaya doing the triple, triple, double axel? Let's, let's, yeah. Still with that kick, but it was impressive to see. You know what, but we need her personality back. That's the thing is that like, I think we can see a little bit some of the nuance of these situations with the athletes and the war and stuff, like they're still people, right? And I think what you see with Olyana Kusternaya is that this is a girl that's obviously struggled a lot in life and has obviously had a lot of ups and downs and it doesn't because I thought who would allow their daughter to get married so early to a guy she's skating with that she just started partnering with but then you thought you think her parents let her train with the Terry right and she had that whole situation when she had to pull out for junior worlds that people claim is not what it was the official reason for and all of this stuff and you think like she actually had to go back, right? And a Terry made her train with the young kids and go on TV and do all of that stuff. And you think now she's succeeding in Paris. Like, it's good to see, right? Like, I don't know if she'll ever be the best, but she will, I think it has to be like a personal victory to get back to that kind of. Yeah, that level at all. Yeah. She couldn't do that a year ago. Right. That two years ago, no, she was not that good the Olympic season. The, you know, she was trying to do stuff, but it just didn't have that same quality. So I think when she seems happier, it seems to be coming back more. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was also interesting. We saw um, a walkabout clip where she was doing oh, a short, and this was another one like Kostanaya. I sort of thought maybe, maybe these were no longer going to be possible. Um, and just see her come out and do a triple triple. She held on to the triple flip. She did a great double axle. Like I was like, oh, she's really doing this. I think she is so important for skating this season. She just has a personality that you get behind through those ups and downs. And she has that effortless power in her jumps and even in her skating. And Cowrie has a lot of power, but it's a different power than Cowrie, right? And I think the two of them together becomes very interesting because often with some of the Japanese women, they seem very sweet and nice, but not like throwing down competitively in a way of Mao Asada and Kim Yuna, right? Like it's very pleasant and oh, you know, Kaori messed up. So Mai Mihara had a nice day. And that was kind of the theme of last season. Yeah, And it was very pleasant and very boring. 
right? I think Wakaba coming back changes things. I think Yelim having this Sandra and David Wilson moment changes things, right? And it even Lindsay doing better in the US could change. Lindsay things. with that lunge, with that lunge, I was like, I don't know what Sandra's fee was, but double it for the lunge because that lunge was everything we wanted to see. Whoever suggested that Sandra and Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> Who could it have been? Gene, yes. Okay, <laughs> like that. Uh. Yeah, it, it was it was lovely to see. I mean, Wakaba right now, there was barely a program. Uh, yeah. Because it was clear she was very focused on making sure these elements can happen, which is what she was clearly setting out to prove. And she proved that in that moment. It's okay. Today I was talking to Sandra and she goes, but I, I'm not a choreographer. I'm a producer. No. Well, she produced I, some great choreography for Lindsay. I'm like, I'm like yeah. really, Sandra? You've never choreographed before? Yeah, except for those Olympic gold moments. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm just doing other things and I, I haven't exercised that muscle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is why it's so fresh and amazing to see. That's what I was saying to her. I said, you haven't used it, so you have a new perspective. Yeah. And, and, and that perspective has been missing from certainly ladies skating. In, in, or women skating in, in the past few seasons. And Justin Dillon needs to start putting her with other people, like matching. Yeah. Putting her on the payroll. Her and David Wilson, like together. Like, yes, you know, like, I agree. Like, giving a Molin in? Well, I wonder if Sandra would say yes. I've never seen Sandra take on such a project. She took on Boitano in 87 to 88. Do you yeah. remember what his programs looked like yeah. before that? Yeah, but somehow you still knew it was capable. Like there was a possibility. That's because we're watching this in reverse. Say it again. We're watching that in reverse. We knew yeah. he had the quality of the right. technique and he was so pure. And Ilya has te jump technique for sure, but he needs someone to work on those other areas. So yeah. it's not a one-to-one -one comparison by any means, but. Just more Sandra, just more Sandra. Maybe her with like Luca Brassard would be good. Mm. He really struggled at Cranberry in the free. So I think that they needed like a reset. Yeah. For... And a new Luke... kind of energy in that creative mix also. Look at how much more confident Lindsay looks this season. We got away from the car crash. We got away from the cartwheel. We took all of the, <laughs> they took all of the junk out and now she looks great. Yeah, but it was also interesting and Sandra sort of was also in alignment with like what Paul Wiley was talking about when you were Sandra asking helped about the dress. Yeah. But he was like, at some point, it's not about results and computer tabulations. Like if you really dive into the material and the message and the emotion, it will happen. And Reese it's- is, If you rewatch his short program from the Olympics and everyone focuses on the free, but if you just focus on the transitions of his short program and what is going on choreographically in between, it's outrageous. The same thing with that JFK program, like those are incredible and got lost in the early nineties of how good those programs were. Yeah. Well, especially cause he was bringing real substances when a lot of his colleagues were giving you sort of razzle dazzle, you know, mm -hmm. showstopper fun numbers. Yes. Uh, but the gravitas of every move he made. He was yep. the tallest small skater I've ever seen, you know? Pay attention when he's skating to where his balance is over his blades as he's moving. Like, it is perfectly balanced across his foot. Mm -hmm. Like, in the... It's unbelievable when you watch that glide. It's, like, crazy, but, yeah. Also, did you see Michelle Kwan rollerblading? with her daughter. With the back on the blades. I remember when she was doing all those um, rollerblading videos. I haven't seen one in a while though. It was the most satisfying. Thing. Like, <laughs> it's just like, you just see like, oh, Michelle Kwan's rollerblading. Like, come on, come yeah. on. You remember in like the nineties when you would get like skating magazine or whatever it was, and they used to sell those toe picks that you could attach to the front of your rollerblades to like emulate figure skates. I never tried them, but I was always tempted. I never did that. Yeah. 
They were fine. I didn't get the pick skates during um, during the pandemic. And it's so funny. I was like, well, that that's a level of intense. I'm not. Meanwhile, I was doing off ice jobs all the time. So, you know, this is fun. This is fun. You didn't buy anything. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they were sold out. You know, that's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't that when everyone started doing the at home spinners? Well, yeah. And then that that's the, the roller skater who also ice skates, Guillaume from Spain, was posting all those videos where it looked like he was spinning and going to maybe break the coffee table. I think it was glass. You know, who knows? Yes. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. In the middle of like a multimedia unit all made of glass. Yeah. It was yes. a unique place to try that. Yeah. An icon, of course, from social media. You know who else is someone that you have to follow? There's this guy that does the movement journey. He has a wife, but he's very in touch with his like masculine and feminine sides. Like his energy is very balanced, Jonathan, right? He has the kind of setup that we could only dream of. He has a sauna next to the Nina Petrenko of ice baths. Okay. And like, I looked into getting it, but I was like, I'm just, you know, maybe when I achieve like a lifelong goal, we can like- it's that know. kind of purchase. Yeah, understood. $1,200. <laughs> but if you use his code, it's 150 off. You know, that's... Oh, well, then get two. Yeah. But if you look at this man in the backyard, first of all, he's so built. He's doing every split, every lunge and squat. And he is like... So he's got the sauna and the ice bath, right? And then he's like, balance is important. And one of his things, he put up like a slack line between his two trees. And you're like, this man is insane and also a genius, right? Yeah. Like he has to do with his body, yeah. All in. Mm. You know, I was doing those ice baths, Jonathan. He he showed you himself reading a book in his ice bath. And you're like, okay. Right. All right. You start to get into it and like, ah, just get in there. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's nothing quite like the like body shock of it, but I guess that's the point. You start to like, you you get the whole point. You get really comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay. So you, it's what like metaphor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. you, and it like works those. Yeah. Okay. No, I think athletes should do it. Yeah, like it is. You know who might need to take a cold shower, yeah. or perhaps a cold bath, just. Like just that Jonathan, that was an excellent transition. Okay, that was so good. Like you gotta, you gotta shake some some stuff out here. You gotta, you gotta cleanse yourself from some ickiness. Yeah, that you are so hard. Though he is maybe not over and hasn't fully processed. There is some stuff stored in that body about what he feels about whatever happened in his former coaching arrangement. Right? Uh, it seems Both in Japan and in Toronto. Yeah. Um, you know, he, wait, what did he say? You know, he's not looking to coach, he's not looking to coach a world champion. He's looking to be appreciated as a human being. Yeah. Yeah. I see his heart, obviously, when I see him <laughs> the kids and cry helping world champions job. You're like, I don't know. That was a very, like, powerful statement that I, and it, it goes so against like the squeaky clean image of the cricket club that Tracy is br brilliant at creating the Yuzu. Because then remember when, remember when Yuzu only took Gisland to the Grand Prix final and Brian posted well, and that- I remember this being something we were discussing. And, and in all honesty at the time, I was like, I wonder if that's really as complicated as it is looking, or is that just logistics of who travels where? But he was very clearly bringing it up. Like the best thing he had to say about Yuzu, he was obviously an admiring of his talent and all that sort of stuff, but he's like, the thing I'm most thankful for is he demanded I be front and center. And then with all these like subtle jabs to former people he's worked with, it was, it was full of bombs, this this um, interview, for sure. That's what happens in these coaching dynamics, though. Yeah. And again, to me, if the team is working together and the student succeeds, this is a win-win for everyone, regardless of who the face is. Yeah. I mean, I it was interesting. I had forgotten that he was always on the team with Elvis. I forgot that. But this is something that happens in NCAA gymnastics. This is some... It's happened forever where there's, like, a personality that really gets a lot of attention, but there's like a worker bee with them that is doing maybe more of the technical work. 
inevitably the person doing the technical work thinks that they could or should deserve more and maybe they do and then they eventually split off sometimes they're in the head coach role maybe it goes well and oftentimes they lack the overall managerial quality that the other person had that there are two different skill sets some people may have both some people may have one or the other that's typically best together yeah you can even look um in like gymnastics like suzanne had this guy jay um who was so key to them winning he was the recruiter he coached bars he was such a core ingredient like he was so key to them winning and he wanted to obviously become the head coach and go off and he's never been able to win mm. since two she retired in 2009 and he has had some of the best teams like compiled never I mean, the same yeah second fourth like over and over and over again but you see it happen all the time like when Galena split with Valentino, Valentino was the, the jump master. He was not as successful. Mm. Um, and he had a bunch of the talented guys like Yermenka and Slava Zagorudnia, but like they were better together. I mean, we didn't she, was better. Better. She, was, she was more successful with him, right? Like together they were more successful. So I think it happens. Uh, like Marina and Igor, would you say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course, yes. Yeah. But Marina kept bringing in whoever to be, work with them technically because that's her gift, right? Is that managerial well, model. And again, I would just like to think, and maybe this is just as I'm talking about like teaching voice and opera and sort of things like that, that it's a generational thing, certainly in my art form where an older generation feels so possessive and threatened at the idea. But yet you were hearing someone like um, Paul being like, I learned this from John Curry. I learned this from John Nix. I learned this from yeah. the Scottholds. I learned this from, uh, you know, Gus Lucy. And it can be a sort of collaborative effort. And I, if you are the kind of coach that's going to be too tripped up in your own ego to not allow your student to find additional information, I don't know. But I, I learned something different from each coach that I work with. And if they, I don't think that they're providing value, I don't work with them. Yeah. Ch Take what works and leave the rest. You know what I mean? Like, so if you go- There are a lot of coaches in Hackensack. I would never ask for a lesson. There are a lot that I have, right? And it's just, you have to look at what people have to offer and- But I would like to think if I was a coach and I sent and you went somewhere and learned something that you were able to bring back, that's awesome. Yeah. Great, let's work with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty uh, phenomenal. So yeah. Although- my coach likes, you know, single skaters to warm up like single skaters and not like dancers. He was like really shading me yesterday. I posted. You, know, <laughs> oh, you can do this. Yes, he is a full blown <laughs> character. Yes. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. I will. Uh, that's yeah. Yuri on Ice. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever seen that show. That would be. Dave, that's still like a fever dream. Us watching that and recapping it together, like. <laughs> I was like, is this real life? Is this happening? Because it was that never happened. to see something so niche to to yeah. what we love with skating. Um, and yet it was so delightfully absurd at the same time. Yeah, the whole thing was a just a like use of his music video or her skating to the nutcracker. Like it was up there, right? In terms of Correct. Correct. So I did go back and rewatch. I watched Rory Flack's show, Breaking the Ice, episode six. Well, she posted something recently and I wanted to ask you about it because she posted something on social media where she was talking about like, here are the financial records. The show has taken a turn. We didn't understand. Like, I was like, this is getting messy if this is honest. Is, um, well, they set it, they set it up in the first episode of the second, when they talked about money. They started talking about stuff and then the producers knew what they were doing. It's like so... Oh, they always, they are, even though it's reality television, I think there are narratives they're ready to tell. It's funny is that I think that in reality TV, everyone thinks that they're manipulating or gaining someone else in some way, right? Not necessarily like the girls who are skating here, right? Like, I don't think that that has something to do with it, but... You know, for Rory and her husband, it's a lot of exposure, right? I'm sure they're, well, it's the first season, so it's probably not big money, right? But no, think about it. 
they're coaching a synchro team, but they don't have experience coaching synchro. Now they have experience skating and doing other things. So you it's start- It's another one of those things when we were watching it, yeah. very little of the training involved any information. Like yeah. sometimes when we watch like a skating documentary or series or something like that, like the Gus Lucy videos, like you hear him saying, I need you to do this and do this. And you're like, wow, that, they're really learning there. But these ones that it's just general, like you gotta nail it, you gotta sell it or something. And I was like, there's no information or training in any of this. There are also ISI skaters. Yeah. And a lot of ISI skaters sort of know how to do a spin or a jump, but they don't know how to skate and they don't have any of the technical nuance. So their abilities are like haphazard. And you see these girls are constantly taking these really, really bad falls that yeah. that doesn't happen every day like that, mm. right? It's, I mean, people you fall every day, but like, I don't know how many times someone falls in the rink and you're, and it's automatically like, do they blow their knee? And you're like on a back crossover? Like, no, right? That's not what's happening. But that is a clue that there's something off just in that, environment or the dynamic or there's some you know and in in terms of just basic uh education on how to fall and you know the body like and that would be again i i feel like i always say this about these kinds of shows but that would be the interesting part to me not like yeah. gossiping parents i would be interested in seeing like how you actually take this group of skaters and make them more evenly matched and teach them skills there's something interesting about that mm -hmm. uh, Hmm. Well, I think um, it seems that the parents felt that the costs were not explicitly explained, or maybe they weren't, did they like lowball the expenses or whatnot, not having done it before? But you also wonder, what is the production company paying for? Because why aren't they, I mean, they couldn't get a U.S. figure skating team, it sounded like, which would have been great. And, and skating is always so afraid of something like this happening. Right. But if done well, it could be huge for skating in terms of getting behind personalities or synchro or anything like that, getting more diversity in this. This, unfortunately, could kind of go the other way where you think like, because now I think it's really damaging that you have a diverse team of skaters and the parents think that they're being taken advantage of, whether that's true or not. Right. That's what the vibe is. So that you're like, okay. We remember this show a few years from now. Oh yeah, with the shady goings on, yeah. Yeah, and then it's, it's another reinforcement that this is a world that's not gonna be safe for minorities. Yeah. That's the danger to this because it's because it's supposed to be centering about that about the diverse angle but it's really about money right. and budget and you know that kind of a thing so i don't know i think it's it's really disappointing but there was just some really strange exchanges on the last episode that were unusual so is it getting any traction like are people watching it i don't know but if you watch it you won't forget it if you watch that sixth episode so yeah I... yeah and I, it's a horrifying like as a performer it's interesting when you have like a performance or you're going to skate a competition or whatever i'm sure there's that huge adrenaline rush of the day but mm -hmm. then you expel that by doing the actual performance by doing the actual competition what's so weird about these like reality sorts of things are they filmed this so long ago yeah. And this has been edited and they, I am sure, had to sign a contract where they do not see the episode until we're all watching it premiere. Mm -hmm. So the idea that they don't even know what's coming mm -hmm. until they see it unfold in front of them. I thought when you, were, when you were on the cooking show, I felt like that show was over edited. To yes. like put in gimmicks instead of like showing stuff. Correct. There was like a, no one frame was ever longer than like seven seconds. I like, found it hard to watch because of the editing, just like in terms of style. And I don't, I didn't keep watching it because of that after you were gone. And I didn't feel connected to any of the people because of how it was edited. But did they feel positively about that experience afterwards? Or is it, because it seemed, 
They, the people on the show? Yeah, on the show. I mean, if we're being totally frank, like I was also doing it just to be like, I don't know, I have a lull in the opera season and the second, the All-Stars one was during COVID and there was no opera happening. So I was like, yeah, why not? This is something fun and funny to do. Um, I think other people were legitimate fans of the show and that's why they were doing it. So I wonder if just like being on the set of a show you watch, I had never seen the show before. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do remember like in the first season, the, the producers had clearly decided to edit a very sweet girl as sort of like an idiot. Oh. And we all could, we could, we could cut and paste anything so that we sound brilliant or stupid or ignorant or brilliant. Um, and you just sort of see, I think there's an inherent lack of faith in certain television producers in whatever the actual subject matter is. So I know like someone like an Amberell on that show is actually very interested in talking about teaching of cooking, to explaining the actual concepts in order to keep it relevant. And that's what's missing from Rory's show. But it's a battle with these producers because they don't believe anyone pays attention. Mm -hmm. So they have to just constantly bombard you with short clips, funny things, sound effects, cutaways, fake drama, like all this sort of stuff. And it doesn't really need that. Even on House Hunters that I went on, they were mm -hmm. constantly trying to get me to fight about the property. And I was like, why Why does there have to be conflict? Why can't we just be discussing discussing the property? I yeah. think that's more interesting if you're discussing the property. I but think so too. Yeah. There's simply um, a lack of faith or esteem in the intelligence of the viewer, which only makes it worse. Right. Correct. And that's what we talk about even with the commentating for the skating. You don't have to dumb it down for us. You don't have to believe we need stupid commentary. We can handle real commentary if you give it to us. Well, I always think it's it's interesting when people discuss Tara and Johnny, even in the comments, if you go on like Facebook versus YouTube and they can be different, but some people will hate them because they are not serious enough. Some people will hate them that they're snarky. Other people think they're just too critical. Oh. And then some people hate Dick Button for being too critical, right? Like you, it's really hard to find a commentator that everyone of course well, of course well, yeah but i think it, it reflects back to what we value in terms of information and analysis and those you know why people like to watch america's got talent i mean it's garbage right but it's feel good garbage where the pe the judges don't have an informed opinion so they're just going wow you know even for me then obviously as a musician it's going to be a little bit different but when i watch those very mm -hmm. little is about actually just watching the performer do the performance. Oh, it's like a random lady in the side, you know, crying. Look at this person. Well, and the judges are performing too. They're amping up their reactions, right? And it becomes this own genre where they're each oh, yeah. doing it. And it's about like the music and the fact that they're missing an arm or, you know, what happened. The backstory and... in those also. And I was like, I don't know. I believe the music is enough. But maybe they don't. So. It's, it's really taken a turn, right? You just. Yeah. My mother ever sends me more videos of America's Got Talent. I'm like, America doesn't. Okay, this is. <laughs> it's talent free in this clip. Yeah. No. <laughs> and it's always like a gay guy from another country singing Celine Dion. And it's always like Heidi Klum being like. Wow. And I'm like, what does Heidi know about this? Yes, she was married to Seal, but... Yeah. Right? Yeah. How is she the expert? Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Okay. Nice this is folks. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she's, you know, great and all of that, but... <laughs> now, what's going on with your Sway and Han? Han is retiring. What's Sway doing? You know, we saw her... Uh, it was interesting verbiage in this announcement, yeah. right? Because he was saying, you know, I, I have tried and it's just too much. I cannot come back another time. But then he said something where, like, I wish her well with her future dreams, which obviously could be a clunky translation. I heard she wants to compete. She's like a Megan Duhamel, uh, Alyona Savchenko type. I mean, so is, are they putting her with a new partner? Oh my God, you know who they should put her with? Who's the boy I love from China? He like, wanted to retire a million times. He also did a La La Land. Oh, um, Han Yan. Han Yan, the gorgeous edges, the power. 
put her with Hanyan because I was watching some of those clips of the recent championships in China. And it looks like they went back to like when Bin Yao first learned how to do pairs, like that fluff piece of him in the 84 Olympics. You know, they didn't have that Caroli um, assembly line ready to replace like a Terry. Did. They're not, they were not ready for with... yeah, it. seems, and they were so good about it for so long, always having the next crop right underneath. And then I don't know what sort of happened with the momentum there. That it's who's, you know, who's on the teams, who's in the mix, where are they training? I mean, even hearing from Sherbakova, where she was talking with Chen Lu, mm-hmm. who has all but disappeared. Like, I wish I was seeing more of Chen Lu. But don't you want to see Sherbakova with Chen Lu? I mean, yes. Chen Lu is a spicy, iconic queen, right? Yes. She is, yes. And we loved her in the 90s. We felt like we knew her. Yeah. Yes. She has like a little bit of a rebellious quality to her. And she got Dennis Petrov. Good on her. How about when she... I'll I'll never forget that scene of her just like in her puffy 90s jacket, right? And when she was second to Michelle, it was just like a twitch that she has. But you're like... Yes, right? Like that is what you want in a competitor. Like she- That's what you want in a competition. I mean, yeah, we still talk about that one. Often more than many Olympic uh, showdowns were were those two programs back to back. Incredible. Yeah. Lori Nicholas, Sandra, like what what more could you want, right? Yeah, an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. Oh my God. When Sandra came to work with Lindsay, okay. She's in like, Hackensack is like the gutter, okay, right? It is like- I didn't realize until they were talking about how dangerous it was in the Javi documentary. Okay, it's not that it's like parts of Hackensack are dangerous, not really where the rink is, but the whole place is like an old vibe to it, right? And, but like the people in the building are equally <laughs> scrappy and competitive and like hating each other and loving each other and just like, constantly okay everyone there feels wronged in some way they're all trying to like outdo each other oh i mean the relationships between the coaches is like next level okay it's, okay i don't want to go specific but like <laughs> <laughs> but a, a strange place to then have sandra be who i think is a, I just was like light. sandra comes down like the fairy godmother mother from Canada in her pink suede skates, her pink hat with with a pom-pom on top and like the sweater around her waist. Working with Lindsay and Julia. Julia, who is just- Different. China shop. She's just powerful and she's gonna get it done. But she is an icon. Okay, Jonathan, like you, if that is the team that that culminated with that gorgeous lunge I saw after her triple triple, I'll take it. I can't tell you explain how entertaining Julia is until you actually experience her in real life. It's an energy, not just a person, right? Like this is, yeah. <laughs> it's a like, lifestyle, yeah. So I was working, Alexi Valetsky didn't come to the US until like October. So I was working with Roman on my jumps during the week, right, last year. And I'd see Yuri on the weekend. And it's impossible to skate in Hackensack like on the weekend with all the kids and everything. So Roman was working with me on like my axle combinations, right? And I was doing axle toe at the time. And lots of us like, we're gonna do axle loop this week. That's what you're gonna do. Which is like a lot harder when you're like still like eh, on the axle, right? Yeah. But like that energy, I was like, I'm not going to be weak to Julia, right? Like I was like, all right, I'm doing it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's do it. And you know what? We did. So yeah. we did. And it was, you know, yeah. 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 She's a forceful person. Okay. This is. I mean, again, invulnerable. You know her daughter's winning like. <laughs> I need to be calm. I need a Sandra type of energy if I'm taking a risk, not the other kind of intense energy. I will you just... might not be right for Hackensack. 
right? Yeah, like, I think it's clear that would not have been my. That's my... like your Rocky training, like montage moment is when you go to the ice house. That's just like, <laughs> like if it were built on an Indian graveyard. <laughs> Listen, you, you might think that this is an exaggeration if you talk to anyone who was trained there. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it from the stories. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. We, it's wonderfully dysfunctional and absolutely fantastic. Okay. Like, <laughs> so funny. And yet I don't want to be anywhere near it. Yeah. Oh my God. And the parents are as intense as the coaches. Well, and I would imagine cool. just taking everyone on. Yeah. Oh, like the mother who's like trying to bribe the coaches with like coffee and breakfast every day as she's talking in the lobby about them. Oh, yes. Me. <laughs> well, because it's great because think about it. Julia's daughter is like winning all of the competitions, right? But she competes against other kids in the rink who might also use the same choreographer or the same other jump coach or and anytime that anytime another kid isn't doing well, those parents are watching and switching and oh, that's where the reality cameras should go. That yeah. is like <laughs> Yeah. I mean the rink director is Craig, who has sued you as figure skating. Oh. And his wife, his wife is Tara Modlin. Done, done. We're already, we've already sold this. Okay, this is already. No. <laughs> and see, okay. He created like a group training environment to help like bridge between learn to skate before people do private lessons to do more group training, which originally the coaches didn't want anything to do with and they thought it was beneath them until they realized it was a feeder system. So now they're all salty about this academy. Oh yeah. I mean, ah, fascinating. Well, skating coaches, you have to realize, Jonathan, they didn't go to college. A lot of them, they don't have like that nuanced thinking. That's not a developed skill. Well, right? and it's a freelance, like, grab what you can kind of ideology. It oh, sounds yeah. Like. yeah. Yeah. Which is when things would get competitive that way amongst them. We love it so much. Okay. Just like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not, they're not full-time with benefits at each rink that they work at, you know what they're I mean? Independent contractors. And, yeah. you know, I don't skate there anymore. And I'm okay with that, but I do enjoy to hear the tales. Like, it's it's the tales of the city. You're like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. I mean, the personality. So just... There's one mother that will, like, yell at her child's coach Eddie time he competes. <laughs> just like, it's so fantastic. Like, you just, yes. Mm -hmm. It's boundaries. Good. Yeah. Boundaries. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and I love that you unveiled or revealed to us that Paul Wiley's parents were basically like adult ice dancers. Didn't that make so much sense with everything? When then you said it as much, a couple of points in the internet, you're like, well, now that of course that I know you have adult skaters as parents, this makes total sense why you were doing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> takes one to know one, Jonathan, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. If you were going to raise an opera singer, would you not know it? Would you not do things differently than you did it and know exactly how to start? Oh, yeah, but it's almost because I know I would do that is why I wouldn't. Yes. Walk, you know, but yeah, there, there, I don't remember. It was like some famous conductor at one point said it's always going to be the third generation of musician in a family that becomes like the absolute iconic one. It takes three generations to get it. And then there were all these examples of like, you know, Mozart's father. Michelle Kwan's granddaughter may have the talent. That's what's going to happen. Whose granddaughter? Michelle Kwan's. Like that'll be, that's going to be the one with the talent. Okay. That'll be the, that'll be the one that really makes the difference in the sport. Yeah. You know, Karen's daughter is a really talented dancer. The other one's on the gymnastics team at the University of Washington. Hmm. Right. One of them is, but one of them's like a really talented dancer from like the Abby Lee competition world, but a, a better. Okay. But it would seem, according to this ideology, that we have to watch for those kids' kids. <laughs> they could really do something. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm into this theory. We're gonna we're gonna track it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So Diana Davis's daughter. That's gonna be the star. Right. That's gonna be the one. You know why it's gonna be the star? Hmm. Because it'll have Gleb skating ability. Right? That's the one. Yes. It's really good. We're like allowed to acknowledge that like that that man can hit some really wonderful positions. Yeah. Well, Jerry picked the right boy for Diana. We always said she was the best stage yeah. manager. Right? Like she's just she's just doing the most right yeah don't you miss that level of gaslighting and and no. then the fans who are gaslit oh my god so when i was in p-town someone messaged me and they were talking and i and they were like i just love it terry it's a traitor and i was like I, was it daniel grossel <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just like Okay. <laughs> I, I felt like saying, what's your mother like? <laughs> right? Like, Are you okay? Do you need help? <laughs> <laughs> How is it going? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that Anna Shcherbakova is so big in China. It's so just. She came, she conquered, she keeps going back. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. And then we have. Uh, Daria Usashova finally retired. We could have said that almost two years ago that that was going to happen. And, uh, and I mean, it's within the family. Yeah. With Maurice. Also, I think that Daisuke Takahashi gives a lot of interviews now where he's talking about his mental health in ways that is very surprising. You know, uh, uh, you almost had like an episode, right? But this was before 2010 Olympics. Yeah. Um, when what had happened? Had he injured himself and was afraid he was? Remember, he was the best skater in the world in 2008. Remember, he did for several years. That man was the best skater in the world. But remember, his he was supposed to win the 2008 Worlds, right? Um, he had that wonderful competition at Four Continents. He and Malbo, and remember, he did four jump combo jump combinations in the free skate, so he didn't get points and that's how Johnny won the medal and he didn't and it's a very interesting thing but I think to go for that to being like hoping for a silver or bronze right because he couldn't really challenge Patrick Chan because he really didn't have the same the most wonderful skater right like wonderful artistic and gorgeous oh, right? yeah but in terms of his snap in the air after that knee injury and with the Japanese, like more fluid style, he really couldn't get that quad as consistent as it needed to be sometimes. Especially later on, like when, as his bad body, because the other thing is, if you have a knee injury, it goes up the chain of your body. Of course, yeah. So like, if you have like tight quads, it can go to your low back and then that could be like a bigger problem and all of that kind of stuff, so yeah. Just yeah, and, it, and he was saying like he had a break where he didn't even know where he went or what he did. And that it was ultimately the coach sort of saying it's okay. I mean, that's a lot of like trauma, right? Yeah. So, And he was like, the fact that the coach was like, you don't have to. I mean, that's you know, this, this we, we, I was, I had dated someone that was very, very toxic, right? Um, and I told you, I said, I don't remember dinners from that week that, we were at and I just don't remember them or why or why I don't remember or what that yeah yeah the mind is powerful it's crazy yeah. it is yeah like there's a reason you don't remember it right like, and, again, I appreciate I mean there's no reason he has to be telling us this now but there's something I find very very positive about openly discussing it yeah yeah so I think it's great that he's saying yeah. it um, and I, and I like, will remember, like, we shut things up pretty much when we judged Vancouver on Patreon. Yeah. I forget what we... Do you remember? I don't remember what we had. I, I think I bumped that silver medalist to... <laughs> and I moved up Lombiel to the third, and I gave uh, Takahashi the silver. I don't remember it. I remember having fun judging it, but I don't remember what we did. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what I did. 
you know, judging 2015 and 2016 women, I, if you go really hard on the skating skills and the quality, it changes things. Of course. Yeah. But they don't. So they never do. They never do. Right. So we get used to these inflated things. Yeah. I also loved when you were talking to Paul Wiley about like, who's one of your greatest of all time moments. And he was like, um, hello, Dick Button. We had to take like a boat to his company. <laughs> She's <laughs> true. Yeah, like to think about like the different, and then to be outside and like dealing with the wind and the light. Yeah. But you yeah. rewatched clips of Dick Button, how powerful he was and how fast his spins were and how, such limited equipment and ice quality. But his power came from the blade, right? Like his power came from this outrageous skating skill. Yeah. So yeah. You know, that's what you look for is that effortless glide and that power. So yeah. Yeah. It was a good skating week. You provided us with some good stuff. More to come. More and to I come. Think you added in the footage. Like I, I had not seen his like pair side by side, death droppy thing where they or whatever where they meet up in viral. Like, yeah I just, I think, sorry where then they meet up together again it is a moment and that's Paul dana graham she's one of the top judges in the u.s whenever they say dana graham her ah, sister, that's her okay her sister is peggy graham okay. her first cousin is Lori parker and they're all on the panel okay yes okay yeah okay got it but think about it if you think about it, if you take one judge off like who are they connected to yes yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> you guys, it looks sexy, everyone. Bye now. <laughs>